Hello, I'm John K. Coyle, the Time Guy, and welcome to episode eight of Beyond the Podium. Tonight, we're going to talk about something that's about to happen, which is uh, the opening ceremonies and walking into the stadium, the Parade of Nation for athletes. And tonight, I'm, I'm sad to tell you that a whole bunch of athletes are not going to be walking, and this is not new. And this is really quite sad for, for a couple of reasons. Think about as a, an aspiring Olympian, one of the things that you anchor to in the future over and over again is really, it's really two moments, two future moments that sort of keep you going, keep you inspired. One is the possibility, rare, but the possibility of bending your neck and receiving an Olympic medal. The other is that moment of that epiphanal moment of walking in to the massive stadium, to the roar of the crowd at the opening ceremony. So why are more and more athletes skipping one of the most meaningful and memorable moments of the Olympic Games? Well, I'll circle back to that in a minute. First, let's talk about what precedes the opening ceremonies, and that's the torch run. The torch is ultimately what kicks off the opening ceremonies. Every uh, four years or two years, uh, there's a torch run. And in Korea this year, uh, the torch has been going now for 101 days, uh, over uh, two, actually 2,018 uh, kilometers uh, after the year. And 7,500 runners have brought the torch to where it's going to be. I actually, uh, I uh, carried the torch a number of years ago in 1996. And uh, I'll be honest, I didn't really, I wasn't that excited about it. I, I, I kick my 26-year-old self. Uh, I was invited to do it. I was uh, told where to show up. And it was going to be in Detroit. And Detroit's, you know, in my mind at least, wasn't the, the safest or most fun place to run the torch. What I didn't quite understand was I was going to be the runner to take it from the city uh, boundary into the city. What I also didn't know is there was quite a bit of marketing behind that. Well, I'm a 26-year-old. It was a Friday night, and I went to the outpost where they outfitted me and handed me my torch. Actually, I'll grab it. I have it here. And... And then they said, okay, we'll get ready. And then it started raining. And then the torch was delayed. So it's 8 p.m., it's 9 p.m., it's 10 p.m., it's 11 p.m. on a Friday night. Here I am, a 26-year-old guy. I'd rather be out with my friends. And finally, the torch came. We lit my torch, turned the screw, held it up. I ran in the dark all alone, as I expected the whole thing to be. You run about a mile, at least I did. And around the corner, there were lights and 100,000 people that had waited for three hours in the rain. I, I was actually in tears at the point. I, I, was, uh, I was beyond, I couldn't even comprehend what was going on. A few days later, again, the power of, of this symbol, a few days later, I brought the torch to the beach club where my mom and I worked flipping burgers um, to, to make money in the summer. And uh, a little girl down the street uh, came, and uh, I don't remember this, but her mother does, and actually Meryl does as well. Meryl Davis, uh, gold, silver, and bronze medalist and the winner of Dancing with the Stars, was one of the kids that got to hold the lit torch. And according to her mother, that was the day uh, Meryl decided to become an Olympian. I don't know how true that is, uh, but the power of the torch is significant. So the torch finally will make its way, uh, as it will here shortly, into the Olympic Stadium. But what most people don't know is the, the athletes... They're outside. Now, in the old days, we just stood there. We, I remember in Little Armour, we were just standing outside in like minus 20 uh, weather for like two hours because the athletes don't, the Parade of Nations doesn't happen for a couple of hours. So these days, I think they're in a shelter and they're sitting at least. But so the, con the concern is, and, and if I was racing the very next day, this would be a very real concern is standing and walking for several hours the day before your competition might have a one or a half percent impact on your performance, that's enough from gold to bronze or even below. So I get it. Like if I'm the 1500 meter short tracker, J.R. Selsky, I probably don't walk uh, tonight because I'm racing tomorrow. But if you're racing even two days later, I, there's no excuse. And the, the worst part about it for, is, is this for me. Some, some NGBs, national governing bodies, ban athletes from walking, which I think is absolutely horrible. And others, which I've heard dr very directly with uh, U.S. Speed Scanning and others, guilt athletes out of walking. They say things like, that would be so selfish to your teammates. And man, I don't know. I, I have a really hard time with that because, you know, the Olympic model is, the motto is the most important thing in the Olympic Games is not to win, but to take part. Just as 
as the most important thing in life is not the triumph, but the struggle. That feels right out of tune with the very spirit of the Olympic Games. So I, uh, I guess I'll show you my torch uh, another time because it's over there and I don't want to interrupt the broadcast, but I'll light it for you maybe on the next broadcast. So speaking of, uh, I'm John K. Coyle, the Time Guy, and I will be doing episode nine tomorrow. Uh, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. It might be an athlete, might be another uh, side story. Uh, but I'd love to hear your comments or questions. Please follow me on my Facebook page or you can find this on YouTube. And I hope to see you in the next episode. All right, signing off for now.